Welcome back to the Reckless Podcast. Uh, talking Hungarian wine. What the hell? Yeah. Things you don't know that you don't know. Uh, and, and, and I got so this this I'm kind of curious. I, I know last time we talked, you were saying some of this wine before it wasn't because it wasn't allowed in the U.S. And quote me, I'm probably saying this wrong because my brain remembers only what I want to. But right. Um, was the government just like taking it? And nobody knew about it. Like, how is that not like? How is it just coming to? To, coming to america yeah so kind yes. of exactly what you said but with little variation sure um so for many many years the russians kind of had control of hungary and they really only allowed one wine to be imported to the u.s everything else was state owned and stayed in hungary um so they were kind of suppressed when it came to the wine production but are the hungarian the people like pissed now because their wine is gone i mean is that like like, <laughs> like is that, are they like hey man this is cool you're making money but where's all my yeah. wine going or and is that like fortunately they figured out how to make enough for oh. both but so still 90 percent of wine from hungary stays in hungary mm -hmm. only 10 percent is actually exported so they oh. still they have enough they're, the they're quinoa keeping people it pretty selfishly. Figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> right? The quinoa people are like, don't eat quinoa. It's yeah. killing our country. It's our source of protein. I'm like, well, keep it. Yeah. You don't <laughs> have stop to get rid of it. To us. <laughs> what are you doing with the money? Don't you need quinoa? Like, oh, I don't know. Well, at least they figured out how to stay drunk in their own yep. country in a better right. way. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, and then um, what are we trying here? Let's, let's start with this first one, and then we'll get, we'll, we'll get into that dirty talk. Yeah. So the first one is Groff Degenfeld. Um, it's their Whoa. 2000. Yep. Six. That's a big mouthful. Does it mean it something is. cool? Uh, no, uh, Degen <laughs> that's the best answer yet. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Hungry Aryan people don't care. Degen I, I mean, it is cool. That, no offense to the family name, but it's the family name. Oh, okay. So, uh, Count Degenfeld established this winery in 1857. Um, and his great granddaughter took it back over shortly after the Russians moved out. Um, and so this is their 16 bone dry, all stainless steel, 100% ferment. So what grape would this be? I mean, it says in the box, uh, it's on the box. What is it? Dummy? <laughs> on the box bottom. Way, yeah, box it's exceptional box, box wine. wine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Freudian flip there. Yeah. It's way better than that, I promise. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> It happens. They can see it. I promise. <laughs> uh, so what's uh, for ferment, so, whatever? I, what does yeah. all this mean now? I'm used to French, which I'm looking at this going, I don't yeah. know what the heck's going on. So uh, unlike the French, they do put the grape varietal on the front. So ferment is the grape. Okay. Um, and if you could explain it, it's kind of taking un -Oak Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, and Sauvignon Blanc and combining it to one grape. So it's just this really high acid, medium body, super refreshing. But it is those grapes. No, no, no. No. Oh. Ferment it's in, is it's the one in, grape. Individual variety. Yeah. Oh. So just like saying yeah. Grenache or Syrah, right. ferment. So, so is, is this grape just called ferment? Like I know like in Chile they have like a, their version of whatever grape and it's just called the something else, but it's something else or is this like just in Hungary? Just in, well, it's now in a few other places, but it, it originated in Hungary, in oh, okay. Tokai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I never heard of it. Yeah. Um, delicious, by the way. Thank Super you. Super clean. Yeah. No, yes, it's only our first glass, wink, wink. Super clean. That's a great, uh, great yeah. just every day kind of hang out, mm -hmm. drinking wine, can take food, right? Not too Absolutely. bad. Absolutely. Yeah. They're Lots really big on saying that these are their crushable poolside wines. Like these are. Mm -hmm. They have pools in Hungary? Isn't that they just do. cold? Yeah. yeah. Summertime. Ice, I thought ice fishing, right? I don't know. <laughs> when we were there, it was bone. It was hot. Man. It was hot. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. 90 degrees and hotter. Yeah, that, that sucks. <laughs> Especially if you're going there going, it's going to be great. Uh, Everyone had their sweatshirts yeah, yeah. and sweaters. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody no. wore anything. Cut the no. sleeves off. Yep. Party, party in the Ukraine. You're Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, cool, man. And then, it, so uh, besides all this, I always like to ask, because, you know, people always, you know, they end up in this business of selling booze, but they start from somewhere and usually it's in restaurants. Yep. So you said the dirty words, dude. Yeah, how, I did how long say. were you in the restaurants? 16 years. Doing what? All of the above, you know, I started out as a dishwasher, honestly, in a very Rad. small little cafe. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been everything from server, captain, som, GM, across the board. Now you're like, I'm not doing it ever again. I'm not. <laughs> I still work as a sommelier at a restaurant in San Diego, a couple nights a week, born and raised. Um, but for the most part, I, I, I like the distribution side, making my own schedule. Yeah, well, it, really it comes nice. a lot. You get tired of the nights and weekends. Man. Yeah. I, know, I know how that goes. And we hear this story over and over and yep. over again. Um, and, and it's, um, uh, do you do mostly high end stuff or all? All. Yeah. The portfolio that Wes and I both represent has wines from $6 up to 300, 400. No, I mean, I mean, you oh, me. from your restaurant career, yeah. like, did uh, you do what, like what, yeah. kind of, what style of restaurants were you into? Same working? idea. I've worked from cafes up to Michelin star style restaurants. Right. All in California. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All, all mostly San Diego. 
Yeah, San, yeah. San Diego's come a long way. It is. It's, come it's a long still got room way. to go, but it's it's getting there. Born and raised, uh, the consortium group that I work for, they've really done a good job with upping the game. Consortium has done amazing things. By the way, the yeah. coolest website ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at that a little while back, and I was like, yeah, these guys don't give a rat's ass. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like the, the pictures in there, I love them. They're like a guy smiling, and he's like, ah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, all right, cool. You should check um, out Born and Ra- We have It's this really luxurious gold everywhere, yeah, right. beautiful woodwork, and then pictures of old school gangster rappers I love everywhere. That. And it's yeah, it's a cool stuff. Right. Well, well, Ironside, that's you yeah. guys, right? Mm-hmm. One of the yeah. coolest, be- one of the most beautiful restaurants I've ever seen. Yeah. With like the cool skulls and whatever on the wall. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I've done a bunch of research, take the train down there and don't remember coming back a few times. <laughs> that's our goal. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, that really is like, uh, and it's, it's they, they have changed the face. I think the sandwich shop was just opening by the, by the San Diego field or whatever, the baseball field. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. And that was just opening when I was there last time. And I think they've done a good dinner. I think they've taken it from a vomitorium of San Diego to like a little more classy. Yeah. yeah uh, it used to be just a beer city, you know? And right. It still is for the most part, but there's a lot of wine infused restaurants coming out. Well, um, I think the, the, the speakeasies helped a lot down there. Yeah. Well, the cocktail scene kind of helped elevate the food scene when people started mm. caring a lot and being willing to spend $15 on a cocktail that takes you 30 minutes to get. You're like, oh, I can have a nice restaurant that has a nice food that has slightly elevated pricing too. And right. that helped, especially in the downtown little Italy area that really helped to elevate that scene. Yeah. That, and it's kind of, it started to grow that way. Right. And I would say North, I guess, whatever, when you get off the train and go left, I'm guessing that's North. <laughs> right? that's, that's that way. Uh, but that whole area that was like ghetto before now yeah, they've yeah. put those R and D's yeah. over there, I believe. Yep. And there's yeah. a couple of the restaurants over there that really are doing great things. And they're like second floors and mm-hmm. cool little niches where <laughs> right. they couldn't be before. And, delis and stuff that that honestly you wouldn't go over there for any other reason yeah other than to party in san diego <laughs> right unless you're lost and wish, yeah, wishful luck that you get out type of thing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. we all done that that's yeah. good that's good well <laughs> good to hear you are fellow chucker what what uh what, what else did you bring here what's in the second one so in the well, second bottle so kind of what we did today is we did three different very different styles of ferment the first one was right. all stainless steel uh the second one barta um one of our kind of higher tier producers is uh Ooh is showing influence of oak in the wine. So she produces wine a lot like Burgundy. Um, I think we're just pounding this. Yeah, we're, we're pounding. We're, we're going to drink up on that one. We're going to call it good. Um, <laughs> Tony, you don't have to be in a hurry. <laughs> um, okay, man. It's okay. <laughs> we won't finish. finish you don't all. have to chug it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to snort it all. Tony. <laughs> um, so this style, I don't want to say a little bit more serious, but more serious. Um, Vivian, the winemaker for Barta, she definitely uses anywhere from new to five-year used uh, Hungarian oak. And that's all coming from the highest elevation vineyard. So on this label, it says uh, Oreg Kirilai Dulo. So again, another one of those like phonetic pronunciations we need uh, means old king vineyard. So it's single king, single vineyard. Um, and one of the, uh, actually the highest elevation mm-hmm. vineyard mm-hmm. in all of Tokai. So a really special piece of land. Um, and that's kind of the difference between the two. Single vineyard, oak. Is this a new style? I mean, putting oak into Hungarian wines is new for them? Or are they doing everything in oak? Mostly steel. The last one tasted a lot like steel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, obviously, there was a, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, yeah. no oak yeah. in that one. Right. So considering that they've only been making this style for about 20 years, everything is experimental. So there isn't necessarily a direct style. Um, if people do know ferment, they probably know the stainless steel because it's a little less expensive to make right. and was imported first. Uh, but there are wineries that are doing all of the above people that are using clay amphora pots. They're really trying everything to see how dry ferment can change the world of wine. Right. So, so here's, here's the thing that we talk about. We talk about a lot on this show. So I'm going to ask, cause it's gotta be the inevitable question, right? <laughs> uh, do you guys have like the master blender that doesn't care where anything come from and can blend whatever you want and then make wine? Is that new? Is that happening in Hungary right now? Yes. Because I'm, I'm, I'm totally intrigued by this concept of like, you know, some old dude with like a hundred barrels laying around and it's like, bring me right. number 42 and, <laughs> and then mixes a wine and it's like, yeah. that's brilliant. I'm like, that's, to me, I think it's a little weird. Like the, what you're talking about about the romance of wine is that it comes from this vineyard. We mm-hmm. put it in this oak or this whatever. And then we may change it a little bit just to change the sweetness of it. But there's not like a, this is from all over everywhere and I'm making a cocktail wine, right? So I don't, is that happening in Hungary right now? Not really. I mean, on the on a very low and expensive for that box style of wine, yes, they have Hungarian white. 
that can come from anywhere in Hungary, but that's not going to be your high end, right? Special. Yeah, we're not you know. we're not importing that here to do no, it. That's no. a table wine, exactly. Right. right, but there's also other varietals besides from it being grown in Tokai and throughout the region, throughout the whole country. You know, there's there's yellow muscat, there's a harsh levelu, um, and various other varietals that people are using to blend to make. You know, really well, I think you have to blend at some level, right? Yeah. I mean, a grape, a grape's not always going to be perfect. Come straight out and do whatever it does. Whatever Mother Nature makes it do doesn't always make it beautiful. You have to do something. Right. Right? Some sort of aging or whatever. But I'm talking about like, and, and I'll just bring it up, the, the prisoner group, right? I mean, sure. it's just like, sure. I mean, that's coming from wherever, really. Right. And right. it's good. But like, yeah. it's the guy who made it, not like sure. the wine or the varietal or the... The region. And, yeah, I grew up learning about vintage. French wine where I was like, oh, no, that's that's yeah. an AOC, whatever. It came from right here. It's that. Right. These are the freaking yeah. rules. Yeah. yeah. So like the Wild West to me out here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesse James comes and goes, I like that one and that one. Yeah, and sure. That's a Jesse well, James you know, I mean, wine to me is, is an expression of the winemaker's thoughts and feelings and, and what, what he's given it from the vineyard. You know, so you know, to be able to do that, to take a, a specific vineyard and... and play with it with different types of oak, different lengths of oak mm -hmm. uh, programs. And, you know, I mean, hell, you could different types of corks will kind of influence the, the, the aging of the wine, if you will. Yeah. So. Who was your, uh, your buddy that I met here the other day that came with that cool glass cork? You see that thing that uh, he, he came in as a glass cork that's reusable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I can't remember the name though. I got, the guy was yeah. uh, a very interesting dude. Great wine. Oh, yeah, from Sinane, uh, from, from Washington. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it took me about an hour yeah. to understand what he was saying. Yeah. I was like, what? Huh? huh? Then he, finally, he's a I, mad scientist. Then, then I yeah, warmed up awesome. to him and was like, wow, bro, you're yeah. like, you. <laughs> I hung out with him for a little bit. I was like, you're tripping yeah. me out, but I really like you. Yeah, he's, he's got some really awesome wines from but Washington. But he had a glass cork yeah. in one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, I was like, which is a very popular thing to do these days because, I mean, cork is coming from a tree and and that cork is server, the, the name of the, of the cork tree, they slough off the bark and they use that. And it takes seven years for that, the bark to regenerate. Are you a cork music. hugger? Uh, you know, come I, on. <laughs> I, I can't say tree hugger. I think that's wrong. But are you a cork, cork hugger? hugger. <laughs> is that what you're telling me right so, now? I buddy? Mean, a lot of people are using, you know, Stelvins, the, the screw caps, mm -hmm. um, just because of the shortage of cork. Well, so is know? that, d d d speaking of screw caps, do these make any difference in the wine? Like, I, I remember when those first came out, people were like, we don't use them. Yeah, and right. now I'm like, I got a lot of wine that I use, it, and it keeps it up pressure. And it, right, it does. Uh, so you tell me. I mean, you're the pro. Well, I don't it's, know, man. It's I just more expensive. It's, a, it's more expensive to do uh, the, the threaded bottles because you got to thread those bottles. That costs right. more than just make it, you know, narrow and, right. and smooth. So, um, and the Stelvins these days are, are manufactured to allow the wines to breathe differently. So they have different, you know, Stelvins for white cork. Um, and also red, red bottle. And Stelvin's oh. the glass ones. Stelvin is, is the screwed cap. Is the screw oh, it's the crew cap. Okay. Yeah. And so, but, but it's not like a difference. Is it a difference in wine, right? Do, does it change? I mean, I guess you, you have to pick the right aging ability. I mean, some are, you know, the cork's going to be a little bit more uh, porous and you know, allow the wine to breathe a little bit longer. And, um, but I mean, no, short term, no, it's not going to, it's not going to affect the wine. Right. So, so it's not like the shittier wine gets. The, the core, no, no, no exactly no. <laughs> the top, right, or whatever, right? Like, no. I also think it says a lot about what the winemaker wants you to think about the wine. This winemaker wants you to drink this wine right now. Yeah, it's easy screw top. You can drink it anywhere. Yeah, this little bit more sophisticated. They maybe want you to age it for a little bit longer. Generally, they'll give you a cork. Yeah, mm. huge generalization, but no, no, no. I, I mean, I, like I said, I, I only know the myth of it. I know that what we use or don't use here. Uh, I know that what I know in, in restaurants and have heard and kind of seen it progress. And um, it's just interesting to me because I can't tell the difference in tasting. Right. You know, I'm, yeah. not, right. I'm not aging them in house by right. any means. Right. right. But right. I've got I mean, some of the older wines up there that I, you know, I don't know what they taste like. They can have whatever kind of top they want on them. We haven't opened them yet. Right. right. Sure. Know. So, I mean, for the whole show and pony for working in restaurants, you know, you could take the, the cork and it's the romanticism of, of popping the cork and, you know, laying it on the table for the, for the customer to, to, to smell or whatever, and then pouring the wine. Right. So, I mean, yeah, you, you're losing that, but I mean, you could also do stuff with the, with the screw caps. You could show people how to properly open the screw, you know, the screw cap. So there's an official way there is no unscrew way, really? a bottle of wine. Right. So, <laughs> so if this is, hey, if this gets dirty, I'm going to be really, <laughs> with you. no, so I see this going bad. Already. <laughs> so the way I do it, and, and Michael Jordan, master sommelier actually taught me how to open right. 
properly is that don't tell me you spit on it no you don't you don't spit okay, on it or perfect. shove it anywhere you, no, just, all right, well. you, you don't instead of just curious <laughs> i never know with you instead of screwing it from the t from the top you you grab the bottom of the foil and you screw down at the bottom and that will break the seal and that way the the um the sharp points are on the on the top of the screw cap instead of down here so you know, a housewife at home is going to grab here and cut her hand on, on little points or you could also you know those little points can also grab the lip, lip of your uh, glass and pull it over sometimes whatever but hmm. it does work it's kind of fun you know it's also something you could talk to you know uh, your customers about at the uh, etiquette the of screwing off a wine cap <laughs> <laughs> things I never thought would be discussed yeah see? you heard it here first you, you know? I, I actually <laughs> true story I had no idea <laughs> Uh, but I will absolutely probably never tell that to anybody. But I, I appreciate you telling it's going me. Going viral right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's going viral. <laughs> no, that's that's cool, man. And, and that guy, Michael Jordan, he knows a ton oh, about. Yeah. I love uh, that, man. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. Yeah. I talked to him a couple of times. Was like, you yeah. know a lot about a lot. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. I don't know about. That's pretty cool. He's he's my man. Yeah, love dude. him to death. He's uh and and so so it doesn't make any difference is what it comes down to. They figured out the science yeah. behind it. Yeah. There's no yeah. like better wine has one or the other. No. And then, no. and then the glass thing, that's the first time I've seen the glass thing. Is that out there? Is uh, that like it's, it's out there, not a whole lot. Um, I'm sure it's not cheap to do those. I, say, I, don't, so. I don't think it can be cheaper than a cork. Right. It didn't look cheap. I mean, yeah. I kept it. I oh, yeah, like, oh, for yeah, sure. I, put it in a, I don't no. know if I'll ever use it again, but I like put it in the drawer. I was like, oh, it's a wine stopper. They're easy because you put the cork you know, up here in your, in your refrigerator and the, you're losing a lot of space. So you put the glass cork in it and you're saving a lot of space. Yeah, a so. nice little clink. Clink, yeah, clink, clink. exactly. <laughs> Got to make sure it clinks. All right, exactly. so th this this oak, I, I took a little sip. I cheated mm -hmm. while you guys were yapping. Yeah. Um, we all did. The, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. I'm, I like it when I'm not alone. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I could definitely taste the oak, and it's still super mm -hmm. crisp, though. Yeah. And are they into mallow at all? I taste no real mallow in this. Not really. I mean, I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm not a mallow fan. No, yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, that's really, really good. It almost has a little soft feel to it, but mm -hmm. the funk without being cat pissy. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> but you want that, that crispness to it, that, that yeah. high acidity, you know, especially with, for the, it's a food wine. Yeah. Ferment know? as a grape is very high in acid if you do nothing to it. It's just, it's screaming high acid, almost right. like a Riesling um, or Sauvignon Blanc. Um, Barta, as a winemaker and a few of our other producers, are huge fans of Burgundy, like you were saying. So they want that restraint. They want you to taste the grape and the vineyard with a little softness from the oak. So, well, they do it. It's crazy. I drink a lot of California wines, and um, <laughs> and, and people always bring them to me, and they're like, "This is oaky," and you're like, "No shit, <laughs> right?" <laughs> like, uh, yes, thanks, bro. Yeah. I really hey. appreciate you letting me know that one. Or this is buttery, and you're like, "Oh right. yeah, I <laughs> yeah. have some bread with this. This is really weird." Um, and this does this is nice balance. I I keep uh, you thinking paprika when I drink these things just on principle. Right. Uh, and and all of this needs like that kind of that chili that kind of mm -hmm. like full bodied flavor I think with it, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if that was meant to be or not or just the way it is, but it's there are definitely wines that I feel, especially the style, um, are your white wines that can go with foods that typically pair with red wine, um, but also right. with spicy definitely. dishes. I mean, we had this. Uh, I, I think it was duck that we had with dinner just perfectly medium rare of duck, course duck you could like liquefy dog shit and drink with though and it's pretty good <laughs> let's be honest i mean that's like duck is like one of the heavenly gods yeah. if you cook it right right yeah for sure I, right. yeah i wear duck fat as yeah. cologne if i could yeah right? oh, I mean, that'd be an exceptional clone yeah you, you like should that? do that yeah, yeah, yeah. what's this that. Roasted, <laughs> duck. <laughs> roasted duck we're in. all right well we're gonna drink this one on break and then we're gonna come back and talk about the last which is a a dessert wine which uh we have not had on the show yet uh, and I'm intrigued with the process of this one versus like Botrytis and other things, which I know very little about. But uh, a dessert wines usually go through some cool process. Yep. Amazing. That's yeah. It. Uh, unless I'm wrong and it's just no. going to be a no. third show and we're screwed. It's just a white wine. Yep. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back. Peace. <laughs> Cheers.